Welcome back to this view beautify and firebase project. The last video we added the code to be able to add a new meetup. Well, a basic one at least. Still a couple of things not working, but it is a nice place to start. Now we'll enhance this page by adding a date and time picker so that we don't actually use the hard-coded current date and time, which is never a great choice for a meetup, which probably should be somewhere in the future, but allow the user who creates a meetup to pick an appropriate date and time. We'll use the date and time pickers Beautify gives us, and I'd say let's dive right into that. As I said, Beautify offers us nice components to work with date and time. Under pickers here, you will find date and time pickers. And they're really simple to implement. You can either implement them as a dialog, which pops up, or simply as a component, which is always visible in your form. You may choose whichever approach or whichever style you like. Here, I'll go with the style where it's simply always visible in the form, though I will later also show the dialog option. Uh, later in this in this series when we actually add a different place in the application where we can edit existing meetups So for now, this is the code we could use in a form anywhere We want the date picker is the date picker the time picker will be the time picker So in our create meetup application I'll actually add a new layout new row above the submit button Here this will also be a row the flex and I'll give this X as 12. And there I will simply say H4, choose a date and time. And it should not just be X as 12. It should, of course, be also have SM6 and be offset to look nice on bigger screens too. With that, I'll copy that, create a new row below that. And here I'll actually add the, well, the pickers. First of all, for example, here I'll add the V date picker like that. V date picker. If I just do it like that, we save this, we go back to the application. We already see the picker here. Now it's missing a prop value and uh, we'll fix this soon. This is how it'll look like. Now I'll duplicate this to also add the, um, the, the time picker below that and now if we save this whoops without a empty space in there if we save this we get date and time pickers sitting here we may ignore these errors we'll fix them soon and of course you could also change the styling take more width in general for your form and squeeze them next to each other i'll stick with this style here and i'll add a bottom margin to my first row here actually with the date picker so i'll add class Margin to the bottom two, maybe. Now with that, we got this margin here below that. Again, feel free to change the styling if you don't want to have it distributed like this. You can always change the form to a different layout. These pickers don't work as of now, though. We get an error because we're not passing a value in there. And they expect to get or to be bound to uh, a property. So here I'll actually add a date property and a time property both a string for now. However, here I'm going to use a new date. If I create like that, it's going to be today. And if I do the same for time, that's also today, of course. And now I want to bind that. So on both, I'll bind V model for the date picker. The picker, I'll bind it to date for the time picker to time. So using date and time, these new two properties. And I want to see what I actually pick. So below the picker, I'll simply add a paragraph where I output, uh, well, here it should be date and time. And that's just for debugging here, basically, so that I can see um, how I get it back. So now you see that is the time string we created with new date. If I now reload, the error also should be gone. It picks the time I'm recording this at. Now, if I change this to 19th, uh, July, you see now it changed to just this string. And this is what you will actually get back. You can change the format of the date you get back. Check out the documentation here for more information about how to configure the picker pickers. For the time, if I change it to 11.30 maybe, now you see this is what I get back. You can change this to a 24 hour style. I'll stick to AM, PM for now. This is what you get back. So this is what you 
probably want to work with. And this is what I will work with. I just want to highlight or show you which kind of date you will receive. Now to work with that, we, we want to store that. And I actually want to store it as a normal date string. So like the string we have here initially, once we didn't click or when we didn't click, it is parsed and understood by the pickers as you can see. This is what we created with new date. And this is what I wanna convert the date uh, I picked back into. The question just is, how do we do that? Because especially for the time, it's kind of difficult because we got this AM, PM thing at the end. So how can we parse this? We'll do that in onCreateMeetup when we submit the form. However, I can already do it in a computed property. I'll maybe name this submittable date time. Very long name. You may of course choose a different one. What I wanna do here is I wanna return a date time which is formatted and I will first create it. I will create a new date which uses this date. And even though that will be something like 2017-07-17 and nothing else once we clicked in the date picker, that is parsable by the new date constructor and should give us a valid date. And I can simply log that here so we see it whenever it recalculates and return date here in the end. So if I now output this maybe below, um, my button here, like here, and it's just really for, for debugging. So I'm outputting the submittable date time. If I do that here, and if I click there, you now see a log in the console. You can also confirm it down there. This is what it creates for us. The time is lost because I don't use that right now, but the date, that should work. So the date was simple. Now I want to also store the hours and minutes. Now, it's super simple as long as we haven't clicked yet because then we also have a date object there. Remember, we do pass a date object into the vTime picker. Time, this property, simply holds a new date. So if we haven't touched the picker yet, it's super simple to actually get the real date. On the date I created here, which doesn't have the correct minute, minutes and hours, I can simply call set hours and set this to, well, to what? To actually this, time get hours and this time refers to this time property which is unchanged as long as we didn't click in the uh, time picker and the same for the minutes so here i can set this minutes to well get minutes so if we do that you will see that if i reload this page we actually get the correct time output there that's the exact same time we did select here as soon as we click on a different time, it breaks though. Because now, get hours, get minutes doesn't work anymore because this time. Now it just is a normal string. That is what the time picker gives us back, just a string. So now for that, we need to, uh, we need to handle that case too. So here I'll first of all check which type we have. With the type of uh, keyword, I can check what this time actually is. Is it a string? String is a JavaScript type, even though we don't explicitly assign types, JavaScript still knows types. It's a, a weekly type language, a dynamic type language. If it is a string, then I need a different method for retrieving and setting the hours, else I assume it's a date, then we can easily set hours and minutes like this. Now, it's the string portion which we need to handle. In this case, I need to retrieve the hours from the string and I'll use a regular expression for that. With the match function, I can get a certain part of that string and the regular expression I'll use, and you can always Google regular expressions like this, like for retrieve hours in hours colon minutes format, that should give you a regular expression. So here I'll actually retrieve the digits and I get back an array where I'm interested in the second object with index one. This will be my hours. The minutes use almost the same regular expression. However, here, I'm not using the digits at the beginning of the string. Instead, I'll use the digits after the colon. Then again, it's all the digits after the colon and use the first at uh, the second element of the array you get back. And you can always log the result of this time match to see if that is what you're looking for. So that's hours and minutes. Now let's try using date, set hours and set the hours here. And 
date set minutes and set the minutes here. Oh, if we do that, we log the date here still, I'll reload the page, don't get an error. If I now click on one here, you see that this actually sets it to 149, which is what I see here. If I change this to zero, one zero, so that's looking fine. It's using my time zone here as a side note, which is exactly what I want. And it's fine because the time zone gets stored here too. However, if I switch to PM, that doesn't change. That's still one. So we're not encoding the AM PM portion here yet. We're just storing that it's one, but it doesn't matter if that's AM or PM. For us, that of course does matter. So we should use the 24 hour format here instead to, well, get the, the correct value for AM or PM. So how do we do that? Now to fix the issue of AM PM, there are two ways. You can either also use a regex expression to retrieve if it's, if it's AM or PM and simply add 12 to the hour if it's PM, that should do the trick. Or also to make sure that this picker gets used correctly across all cultures and to make this crystal clear, you can also use a different setup or configuration for the time picker, which you can find on the Beautify configuration. You can change the format from AM PM to 24 hour. So if you simply add the format property and set it to 24 hour like that, now what this does is you've got a 24 hour picker here, obviously. And now if we reload the page so that we can really see this, you see that clearly is 2 AM here. But if I go back to the hours and pick 2 p.m., which is 14 o'clock, you see that's correct too. And this is the alternative. Now, I'll later in the series come back to the a.m. p.m. picker to also show that once we added um, an event to, well, also show how you can work with a.m. p.m. But for now, this is how we'll use this. And with that, we added the date pickers. Now let's make sure that we also store this once this gets submitted. So I have the submittable date time I'm retrieving here. Can get rid of the console log statement. And I'm now getting a date, which actually isn't the format I want it to be. Now all I need to do is here for date. I don't use new date anymore. Instead I use my this submittable date time computed property, which is always up to date whenever I type. So this is what I will submit. This is what I will use in the store therefore. Now, of course, what I also want to do with that is that I output all the information I have. So on the single meetup page, right now, here that G, that I don't need that. The place here, I can of course use meetup location and I can also output the description here. So meetup description. As a side note, since I use string interpolation, there's no room for cross-site scripting attacks. That's really good too. Now the missing thing is in the store, I also want to fine tune the dummy meetups I have here. I want to give them a location and description too, so that that works on our updated single meetup page too. So here location, that would be New York. And obviously you might enter a more precise location like where in New York, sounds helpful if you want to meet. And here I'll add a description to it's Paris and let's also add one here. Description New York, New York. So that is the setup I want to work with. Back in our application, I'll pick the picture from before again, enter that here, give it a title, Munich JavaScript meetup at the Marine Platz in Munich. Awesome. Let's pick a date. 20th July, let's pick 17 o'clock, so 5 p.m. here, and let's click Create Meetup. We're redirected. You see here, that's 2017, 20th July. The time is wrong, you could say it's 15, but it's not really wrong. It's a different time zone. I was GMT plus two, this is GMT. So if you add two, you're back to five o'clock, so that is fine, it's normalized, you could say. And if you view any of these meetups, it should work. Location is displayed, description is displayed, the same for our own meetup. Now, again, we have to work on the date, probably. That's not 100% in the state I want it to be, but we will do so, and we'll do so in the next videos. So, hope to see you there.
Bye.